a question arises that what amount of cash a firm should distribute among its shareholders or it should retain in the business now before going into the answer of this question one must think that what purpose of excess cash the firm can have with itself we know that the firm can use excess cash in projects or other financial instruments now under perfect market conditions once a firm takes all the positive npv projects it becomes indifferent between the excess cash it can save or it can pay out to the shareholders however with certain market imperfections there is a trade off that is the excess cash retained by the firm can reduce the cost of issuing new capital in the future but it also increases the taxes and the agency cost of the firm now we see that the new projects are financed by the cash retained by the firm with itself and the positive npv projects undertaken by the firm are responsible for creating the shareholders value whereas the npv uh, the negative npv projects do not create any value for the firm however uh, once the firm takes all positive npv projects it becomes indifferent between the saving of the excess cash with itself or paying it out as dividend this means that under perfect market conditions the surplus cash has no effect on the value of the firm this means that a retention versus payout decisions is similar to the dividend versus share repurchase decisions as both have a uh, no relation with the firm value because these are irrelevant to the value of the firm now to understand this relationship let take an example uh, uh, in which we have a perfect market condition uh, the firm has excess cash holding of 100000 now the firm has two options of using this excess cash the first option is that to buying of one year treasury bills at and earn 6% rate of interest there on retain it and pay to the shareholders after one year as the dividend the second option is that the firm can immediately give out this excess cash to the shareholders as dividend and these shareholders will be at liberty to invest this amount at their own so what will be the best option for the shareholders under perfect market condition we see that the present value of option 1 uh, using the proceeds of t bills by the firm has an amount equal to 100000 whereas the immediate dividend payment to the shareholders is also equal to the amount of 100000 so we see the implication of this excess cash under perfect market conditions that this excess cash holding or its immediate payment to the shareholders has nothing to do with the firm value now we have uh, another example with the imperfect market condition and that imperfect market condition is the existence of the corporate taxes again we will be repeating the same example with the addition that now there is the corporate tax rate of 35% so what will be the best option for the shareholders under this imperfect market conditions and we assume that this shareholder is a pension fund investor now our example solution says that the future value of the first alternative is equivalent to 103000 whereas the uh, uh, if, 
प्रेजेंट वैल्यू फ्यूचर वैल्यू ऑफ दिस सेकेंड ऑप्शन इन विच द इमीजिएट अमाउंट इज पेमेंट पेड टू द शेयर होल्डर एंड द शेयर होल्डर इन्वेस्ट दैट अमाउंट एट द रेट ऑफ सिक्स परसेंट द फ्यूचर वैल्यू ऑफ सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स थाउजेंड नाउ इन इन द कंडीशन ऑफ इम परफेक्ट मार्केट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ टैक्सेज वी सी दैट नाउ शेयर होल्डर इज एट द बेनिफिट एज ही इज अर्निंग मोर फ्यूचर वैल्यू देन द कंपनी इट सेल्फ वट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स टैक्सेज ऑन द फॉर्म वैल्यू सी दैट द डिसंस ऑन डिविडेंट पेमेंट्स वर्सिज कैश रिटेंशन मे आल्सो इफेक्ट द टैक्सेस पेड बाय द शेयर होल्डर्स नाउ लेट सी एन एग्जाम्पल we have a firm who has only one asset of 100 dollars and that is the cash uh, we assume identical tax rates for the investors now the firm has two options on this 100 dollars cash at first uh, the firm can immediately pay it this amount as dividend to the shareholders and second option is that the firm can retain this cash and earn interest to pay a dividend to the shareholders next year as a first option if the firm pays dividend immediately and shuts down then the share price will be equal to the uh, price uh, where we assume the x price is equal to 0 because the firm is shutting down so the firm value will be equal to 0 plus 100 as dividend into uh, 1 minus tax on dividend over 1 minus tax on the capital gain now tax on dividend or the td is basically the tax that shareholder is paying on the dividend whereas tg is the uh, tax credit allowed to the shareholders on the capital loss due to the uh, shut down by the firm the second and the alternative option with the firm is that the firm can retain this cash and earn interest there on through the investment in t bills and after Uh, paying the uh, corporate tax on the interest earned the firm can pay the rest amount to the shareholders as a perpetual dividend every year so in this case the uh, dividend that is going to the shareholder is basically the after tax cost of interest to the firm uh in this means that the shareholders or the investors cost of capital in this case will be equal to investing in t bills at her own and if the uh investor is investing this amount at its own her cost of capital will be equal to after tax interest cost of capital which a in this equation uh ti is the in uh, tax on the interest income earned by the investor now in this condition uh, how the firm value can be determined we see that the price of the firm then will be equal to the combined effect of the corporate tax rate and tax on the dividend in relation to the tax on the interest income earned by the shareholder and and that relationship is basically representing the effective tax disadvantage to the shareholders now we see that the interest on cash retained by a firm is taxed twice as we have seen in our earlier equation it taxed in two ways at first the firm pays tax on the cash retention at the rate of tax c or the corporate tax and then it, it the investor pays uh tax on the increased value of the firm at the rate of g or the capital gain tax the earnings made by the shareholders at their own are taxed once so there is a the difference between the earnings by the firm and the earnings by the shareholder cash retained by the firm and the firm is earning interest there on and then it distributes the amount to the shareholders the firm is earning uh, the firm is paying tax twice whereas if the shareholder is alone investing the amount and paying tax he is paying tax only once 
तो द कॉस्ट ऑफ रिटेनिंग कैश डिपेंड्स अपॉन द कंबाइंड इफेक्ट ऑफ द कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स टैक्स ऑन डिविडेंड एंड द टैक्स ऑन इंटरेस्ट अर्न बाय द शेयर होल्डर लेट्स सी एन एग्जांपल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इफेक्ट वी हैव अ कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स रेट ऑफ 35 परसेंट डिविडेंड टैक्स रेट ऑफ थर्टी एंड द गेन कैपिटल गेन टैक्स ऑफ ट्वेंटी the effective tax disadvantage in this case for the firm, for the shareholder on retained cash is equal to 13.9% so we see that after adjusting for the investors taxes there is still a large tax disadvantage for the shareholder of the firm and that is due to the excess cash retained by the firm